It is October 20-something-ish, 2023, and I'm long overdue for an apple tasting out here in the, uh, well, this is going to be a long one. Okay, this is going to be for the nerds because uh, I have a lot of stuff to taste, a lot of new stuff, a lot of old stuff that's fruited before, and I'm determined to, A, take more notes, and I'm going to start marking stuff for calling. Uh, stuff that I just want to rip out. I want to thin out the trial rows. They're too crowded. It's crazy in there. There's stuff just falling everywhere. Taking a few of the trees out will give the ones that are remaining more room to grow. They'll grow better. They'll make better apples. They'll be stronger, etc. Since I'm planning to move eventually, hopefully within a year or two, I have to assess all the other apples that I have here and decide whether to take them with me or not. I've got quite a few new apples that are, you know, on small graphs out here that I have never tried or, you know, don't haven't gotten an idea of yet, haven't taken any notes on yet, etc. So this is going to be a long one. It could be two or three videos in a row to get through all this stuff. So let's nerd out. The apple previously known as Ice Princess. You can see these have all turned waxy. I've already had some early drops, which is definitely a hallmark of this variety. This is a very greasy apple. It, it turns really greasy like this, and then I think that pretty much indicates that it's ripe. This did not turn out at all as expected, judging from the first year that it fruited, which it was late in winter time. It was incredibly crisp and fine-grained. Like, that's one of the reasons I want to name it ice something. It had a subtle pine flavor, but it just has turned out to be quite a bit different than that when it grew up. You can see the size is bigger. It's uh, is ripening much earlier. The thing that has stayed most consistent is the early drops. So let's just see how this one off the ground is. It's like brown inside. Let's go with this one. Okay, so this is a little greenish here, and it's waxy, but maybe it's not ripe. Mm. Well, it's tasty, but it looks like it has some kind of physiological problem here because it's brown inside. Huh. Yeah, I do not know what that is. Mm. Well, this one has a little bit of that icy texture and a little pine flavor. Make up your mind! How am I supposed to name you and release you until you're not consistent? All right, let's try this one. Nicely complected. Weirdly, again, it's brown inside. I have no idea what that is. It tastes good. Like, it doesn't taste like it has a problem. But clearly, it, there's something weird there. I'm going to try one more off this tree. Then we're going to try it off one, two, three other trees. We'll see if this uh, browning flesh thing follows us. I think I can almost see it through here. It actually tastes fine. Comments on the flavor. Well, first of all, the texture is lovely. It's very crisp, very fine grained, juicy, light. The flavor is light with like these little, real light aromatics dancing around the top, like the pine thing. It's just very, very subtle, but it's there. And other kind of fleeting aromatic flavors. And for some reason, that just makes it compelling. Like you're kind of like, what is that flavor? What is that flavor? And you can't quite get it and you want to bite it again and see. It's effervescent. Like if I named this champagne and gave someone a bite, they would get it. They would get the name. And I'll be thinking something along those lines. I th one thing I thought was ever clear because it's just beautiful complexion. Unfortunately, it also gets scab rather bad. Maybe that's not the best name. It, I mean, I'm not naming it Clarisil. <laughs> Yeah, and just because of the flavor, it's just, it's got this wonderfully clean flavor and presentation and liveliness that's just, it's really cool. I, I like this apple a lot. The greasiness is a little weird. Like, my fingers are just all greasy now. Let's try one of these. Also brown inside. A little drier flush, essentially the same though. Same clear, bright flavor. Maybe a hint of banana, no pine. Hmm. It really is delicious though. Okay, here's one more tree. Let's, uh, these look a little bit greener. You know, different tree just might be ripening a little different. Okay, here's my best guess at predictions for this apple. It's going to mostly retain these characteristics, the fine grain, usually crispy, as long as you get it at the right time. These fleeting, like, high aromatics hovering around the top of the flavor profile. 
the overall clean, yummy presentation. When handing this apple to a lot of people, their first bite is going to be unimpressive, but they're going to take a second bite and a third bite, and then they're going to kind of come around and say, oh yeah, that's good. Because it seems a little pedestrian or light on flavor in the beginning, but it really isn't. It's quite intriguing and delicious, and this apple deserves a name and to be gotten out there. Okay, who's next? Here's some cherub. Let's, we're gonna revisit cherub down in the trial rows. That one's kind of rotten. Let's see how they are up here right now. Severe watercore. Very interesting flavor though. Man, that is a delicious little nugget of goodness right there. This is a delicious little nugget of flavor. It has some really fruity, notes of again kind of that berry or fruit punch or kind of generic fruity flavor it's rich um the one thing about this apple is it could often use a, a just a little raise in acidity i've always said that about this apple and that you know that's been more of a problem for me in my seedling apples than them being too sour which is kind of the stereotype that you're going to get a sour apple if you plant a seed but yeah wow delicious flavor it's uh, very candy-like. I, I honestly wish I had gone with the name um, Shirley Temple for this. Because of the low acidity, it just has that kind of like cloyingly sweet. Little kids are going to love it because it's not, it's like a lot of sugar and without a lot of challenge, the kind of a challenging things like acidity that adults like typically. It's a really cool apple. Now the texture is weird. This year especially, but I've seen this many times before. It is like a dense unripe stone fruit almost more than an apple it's very strange and and it instead of getting mealy it'll just get more and more saturated with liquid and more like that to where you bite into it and there's no crunch at all but it, it kind of it's really hard to explain um, it's not offensive it's just different and weird and as i've said many times before along with that fruity component there's definitely a savory component it's less obvious because it's like kind of layered underneath and comes up a little bit after those fruity notes but anyway great apple you guys are gonna love this apple when it fruits for you this is a new apple that i have a nickname for that like one or two people know but i'm not going to tell you um, it's rubyot king david 14.5 uh, the first year i found this i was doing a tasting video i grabbed this off a tree down the trial rows i bit into it and it was solid velvety red through and i was like man this looks like a king david cross and i looked at the tag and it's like yeah rubyot king david 14.5 that tree has been kind of just not grown well and fortunately immediately that first year i tasted it or the next spring i grafted it out here like i always do with anything promising to get it out into like on a real tree where we could find finally get some fruit and this year both this tree and the original one in the trial rows are fruiting i do not think this is ready at all but i just want to try it early here i'm gonna save that cherub for seed yeah when i when the first time i bit into this it was just velvety red beautiful inside Ooh, that is a long way from ripe. So that's got a ways to go. Hopefully it'll redden up a little bit more, especially since the nights are cooling down and there's some, some kind of relation between nighttime temperatures and red flesh development. My prediction with this is if it's not a good eating apple, it's going to be a great cider apple. We'll see. There's some sugar wood back here, but they're really not ready. There's one here that looks like it's bug bit. Oh no, that's still green. Still very green. Already super sweet. Hence the name. What is this? That's apple usa. That's a late apple. Okay, this is Grenadine Next Gold Rush 11.5. I thought this was promising at first, but I've never given it a name or anything because it just doesn't quite get to that level where I feel like doing anything with it or sending it out. You know, it's not doing at all what I thought it would. Um, you know, I, I have never seen this apple show that much pink flush before. Very tannic, pretty richly flavored. I think it's make a great cider apple. I mean, I'm all puckered up from biting into that. I'm, you know, my cheeks are all dried out from the tannins. Interesting, you know, I'm not gonna call this apple for sure, but it's not that promising. What has been a pleasure and a surprise this year is the apple previously known as Flaxen, and I'm gonna pick this for you guys 
even though I feel like it probably could use a tad bit longer. Once grafted out here on this, you know, real tree in the open, it's adequately shaded to not get horrible sunburn like it does in the trial rows, because it is very susceptible to sunburn, and allowed to grow out to size like the the other one I have in the fridge is probably that tall and you know I mean it's a big chunk of apple. It has developed a lot more pink flesh than I originally thought and is now officially renamed Pink Lemonade which is the name I wanted to name it in the first place but I just didn't think it was going to express enough pink flesh to justify the name. Uh, reasons I want to name it that it has a bright fizzy acidic presentation when you bite into it and it can actually have a citrus uh, aromatic component like lemon actually specifically now that is not very common the, the lemon is fleeting subtle and not very not it doesn't seem to be even the norm here but it is there and otherwise it just the acidity and the pink flesh and the overall presentation uh justify the name so let's bite into that one nice flavor it does have berry aromatics from the red flesh, but they're not strong. It's a little more along the lines of something like um, pink pearl, which I think of as more of a, a cooking apple, really, than a dessert apple. And I think in some ways this compares to that apple, even though I don't really grow that apple here. I have a graph that should be fruiting maybe this year. But this is probably going to be have significant scab resistance. So far it has shown good scab resistance here. As far as I can tell, you know, from what I've grown and eaten and observed if anything it's going to be at least fairly resistant to scab and i think it may be strongly resistant to scab which i believe pink pearl is very susceptible most of those outer red fleshed apples are this one would get that from this apple gold rush which is one of the parents not from the other parent which is grenadine which it actually resembles more sizable speckles you know just like grenadine pink flesh showing through yellow translucent skin just like grenadine and also like pink pearl blocky um with these kind of like almost longitudinal ridges like or noses like here's the uh the grenadine roman nose effect there it's not strong but it's there really cool apple if you have this from me already label this flaxen please go scratch that out and write pink lemonade on the tag and I think people are gonna really enjoy this apple. It's probably gonna make a good cooking apple. I'm not sure it'll hold its shape. Uh, probably not, I'm guessing. But and, and in fact, I think I, I think I, I cooked a few slices of this to see and I don't think it did hold its shape well. That's okay. It has the acidity and lovely apple. I'm excited about this apple, M much more excited. Like I've been kind of hot and cold in this apple. Some years I'm like, eh, whatever. You know, it gets such bad sunburn in the trial rows. I'm just like, I can't even grow this thing here. But now I'm like, oh, hmm, wow, cool. People are gonna love this. Pink lemonade. This is saffron crocus. If you've ever had the herb saffron or spice or whatever you want to call it. That is where saffron comes from. Three of these red threads in each flower that have to be taken out by hand. There's no way to do it that I know of by machine or anything, but not a big deal to do for yourself. But if you buy saffron, no matter how expensive it seems, you're getting a good deal. I gotta get those tonight. I wanted to make a quick stop at this tree. As I recall, I grafted 90 or more seedling apple scions onto this tree to allow them to go to fruit, you know, all different seedlings. Over and over again, people have left comments saying that if I graft, and they're always unequivocal, they're like, if you graft your new seedling scions onto a tree that's already fruiting, they will fruit faster. Every time I've asked for some kind of clarification, like, how do you know that? Um, you know, what is your actual experience, etc. I don't think I've ever gotten any really good answers. So what I decided to do is just do the experiment right because my previous experience was has not indicated that that's the case uh, stuff just seems to take about as long or close from seed when grafted onto an established tree that's fruiting versus you know like say a dwarf fruit stock or just letting the seed grow okay but not only did i do that i did a bunch of grafts kind of normal just you know graft on right there wherever just kind of what i'd normally do for grafting top working a tree and then I did all kinds of weird stuff. So like this one is grafted into the end of a branch and then it loops all the way back and is regrafted into the same branch. Oh, here. So it's, 
it's grafted into the end of this branch, which has a fruiting spur, and then it goes back and it's grafted into the side of a fruiting spur, not just a branch. I did all kinds of weird stuff like that. I grafted stuff with the tip instead of the butt. I just did a little bit of everything. I have some that go from like one branch here to another one there. Here's one that's like a caterpillar. So it's grafted here and then it loops down and the tip is grafted up here into the, the same branch. And of course, in between, what do we have? Fruiting spur, fruiting spur, fruiting spur. And this tree has been bearing fruit. So if it's possible to trick the scions, the new seedling scions, into thinking that they're part of a fruiting tree and they should already have this like, you know, sexually mature uh, hormonal profile that's going to cause them to start producing fruit. I mean, because that's kind of, I guess, the theor my theory on how that would work. One of these experiments ought to, if anything, is going to help, you know, you'd think that would help. So far, no fruit. This is either its third or fourth growing season. Hopefully something will fruit next year, but it's just not looking good for that whole, you're going to get fruit faster if you put it on an established tree. I am sorry to say that we are too late for Cherry Crush. Cherry Crush was my favorite early fall apple this year. You know, during its season when like Sweet 16 was going, um, I'm not thinking of what else anyway. Whatever else was going, this is the apple that I was like, I want to go out to the tree, grab a couple of these and munch them down. And I did that a lot because this year had more fruit than ever. And I'm just going to look here, but most likely these are actually going to be squishy on the tree. At the very least, they're just going to be kind of mealy. So this is way over the hill. This is going to be a short season dessert apple. The texture is pretty good right up until it's really ripe and then it just goes downhill super fast. I don't think picking it early and storing it is going to help with that really, but it's well worth it. It has a delicious rich flavor. It has definitely got the cherry aromatic. Sometimes it's really, you know, forward and pretty strong. Other times it's very subtle. Occasionally it's not even there, but overall it's there and, you know, it's the distinguishing flavor characteristic is delicious. Uh, that's all I could really say. You're just going to have to try it. As you can see, there's going to be an overabundance of scion wood, so that's not a problem. It's pretty cheap. I think I sold them for like seven bucks a piece last year. Still, just because it's new, you know, try to milk a little bit more out of it for a while. So I can <clears throat> accumulate more money for my new homestead project. And I need to come out here, pick up all of these apples and get all of the seeds. I saved a lot of seeds from this. There's a lot in the red flesh blend. There's a lot in the, the fall blend. And there's going to be a lot that are just, you know, labeled as cherry crush open pollinated. Definitely a good breeder. The things that could be improved with this apple, maybe a thinner skin, not a big deal, but you know, be nice. A texture that will hold up a little bit longer because it's just, you know, it's just annoying to have an apple that it's like, it's getting there, it's getting there, it's still a little starchy, and then it's just right, and then it's like you bite into the next one and it's mealy. So that's kind of irritating. And of course, more cherry flavor, just reinforcing that. Now, what's really cool is that the last couple of years, I have noticed a cherry flavor in chestnut crab, and not very subtle, like actually pretty strong. Also because of another apple we'll talk about that's a chestnut crab offspring with very high flavor. I think that chestnut has a lot of potential to lend a lot of high flavor uh, genes to stuff. So I'm definitely gonna cross chestnut crab with this. One thing about this apple, it does not take pollination well. Empty bag, empty bag. You know, I think everything left here, I think I harvested all the fruits that were pollinated. I don't know what the deal is. Um, it just doesn't seem to take pollination well. It, I mean, it produces plenty of seeds when bees are pollinating it. It's just, you know, they probably get over pollinated. So the trick might really be to just revisit the flower a whole bunch of times. Maybe early in the flower's life, it isn't very fertile and it has to mature a little bit more. You know, who knows, but I'll try those things and see if they work. But it, I think it has done okay as a pollen parent, as far as I can remember, which I don't remember any specifics at all, but I don't remember it being a problem. Let's say that. Okay, I have to come back out and get these valuable, super cool seeds. I'm, I'm really into that apple. I think it's great. I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. Don't plant more than you can eat or sell in a short period of time, because it is not going to hang around long. We've visited Bite Me so many times. I'm just going to say the same stuff. Okay, this is again apple previously known as Ice Princess. 
again, just effervescent, sparkly. Yum. There's probably an apple named Champagne already, but I'll be looking to see because something along those lines, or just effervescent maybe, because it is effervescent and lively and lovely. Here's some Dutch Master. Nice little bit of water core though. Here's an Appaloosa that's got a worm in it. See what that's like. Far from ripe. Already flavorful. No red flesh, because this can have like solid pink flesh. They're interesting, but it's not even close to ripe yet. We're gonna go look at Dutch Master again down here. Okay, let's get serious now. <clears throat> I like this apple. It's promising winter cooking apple. As you can see, it's bearing very heavily. The apples get quite large. They're getting larger and larger and pulling the tree further and further toward the ground. I really need to get out here with a uh, heavy duty tall fence post, drive it in there, bend this thing up and tie it up. Literally, this could break. I mean, I already broke one tree this year. This is our pink lemonade down here on this tree which is sunburn 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 sunburned laying over the apples sunburn really bad here look at that i've already picked a bunch of these off they're really bad ones very different it's very different out here it's very dense um, you can see a lot fewer speckles that one's already soft environment can make all the difference at this point, like this tree is not important to me. I do want to take some more scions and get them grafted out in other places, just to have more copies of it. More fruiting too, so I get to try it more and have other people try it. But as far as this actual tree goes, it's in such bad shape that I, I don't care too much. You know, it served its purpose out here and it's time to move it out. Very next tree is sugarwood. Again, with the sugarwood, like this tree is in such bad shape. It's all the way laid over. This is all sunburned right here and weak and cracked. So if I bend this back up, it's probably just gonna rip the roots apart and kill the tree. So I may actually call that, I'll decide that later. But the next one here, I've already tried this a bunch of times. It's a big, hard, tannic, mealy, yellow apple that looks like a big gold rush. Uh, they're not all big, some are small. None of them have been good at all. Very bitter. Ugh. So that is a call. And we'll see about sugar wood. I might just let it lay there on the ground. I might try to prop it up and see if it cracks or not. But I do need to get more sugar wood grafted out. I did graft some out for making cyan wood. In fact, I think this one right here on that stump is. So I may leave some of these stumps and regraft them to again something like sugar wood just to grow more cyan wood but in a lot of cases i actually want to take some stuff out again to just make these trees spaced out a little bit more grenadine next question mark 1110 that means the tag was lost so i only know one parent grenadine soft nice flavor i don't remember what this was doing earlier in the season I remember tasting it and thinking, oh, I gotta write down notes on this and then. Okay, this one is a call. I've tasted this year after year after year. It was extremely productive this year. Just not interesting in any way. The next one is actually January Russet. So that's a keeper. It's pretty sickly and messed up. Uh, again, you know, putting in a post and Tying that up would be a really good idea. This next one, this big, huge tree, nice, healthy stock, super productive, totally useless, bitter, weirdly dense and chewy and soft and thick. No, no, if I think something has special potential for cider, I'm not gonna call it. But as far as like, oh, you could put that in a cider blend, that pretty much describes almost every apple here. I have to say this one looks, interesting it's just one of the reasons i want to thin this stuff out is because it's so hard to get in here and sort through and figure out what's what okay interesting almost candy like flavor i want to try another one of those okay that one's dense water cord soft oh that was a different tree see i can't sort i can't sort out what's what now here's one that's so laid down on the ground like the stem is buried and there's a couple of apples on it very high tannin and bitterness. I mean, as far as like a a bitter goes, a bitter sweet. Yeah, 
I'm going to have to go back through this video to get these notes, but Grenadine X Wixen 11, I think it says 4. I mean, it definitely says 4, but unless it says like 14, I think it's 4. No, it's 1114. Potential cider apple. I need an assistant to follow me around. Could be taking notes. You know, it's hard for me to do all this, talk, do video, look at the tags, and then stop and like write this stuff down. So I'm going to try to say enough that I can go back through the videos and extract enough information to take these notes. This one has really severe burnout down here, tons of suckers. There's the tag. Okay, Grenadine next Wixen 11.2. Actually looks kind of intriguing. Yeah, this is the one I saw earlier and I was like, I was like, what's that? Look at these pretty sunset colored apples and there's more. Interesting, that's gonna be a very dense apple. It looks, it looks dense. Oh, dense. Fine grain, very high sugar, probably from its parent Wixen. Very tannic, probably from its parent Grenadine. Little red flush, bittersweet. Potentially cider apple. From what I've seen in the past, there's a good chance that this will develop better, deeper pink flush in the future over the years. Another potential cider apple, like, you know, not just, oh, well, we could throw that in a cider blend, but like good amount of tannin. And it tastes really sweet. That could just be because it's low acid. Okay, who is this? Where's the tag? Edible, low acid, coarse flesh, not exciting. I don't see a lot to recommend this apple, but I'm not, it's not quite a call. And uh, it has no tag. It's got a pretty large stem here. It comes up, it forks into two branches there. Looks like I actually put in a post and staked it up, but I just am not seeing a tag. I don't see this as a promising apple, but it, it could be potentially interesting for cider. I mean, that's pretty tannic again. It's just grenadine throws a lot of tannic offspring because it's pretty tannic itself. This right here, close to a foot over my head, and I'm 5'10", in one year. That was grafted just a little twig onto one of these established rootstocks, and it outgrew me. All these side branches, tons of cyan wood. And I put like four, uh, three or four into that stump and they all grew like crazy. So if you want to grow cyan wood, that's a good way to do it. Put it on some established tree or root system. There is no fruit on this, but I think it all just fell off and I think it was crappy. This one is Grenadine X Wixen, but without a, a number of session. And I've tasted this before and it's never been any good. Oh, there's a call. Next, we have this burnout covered thing. Grenadine Next Gold Rush 11.9. Look at that, big apple. Soft, however, it has an interesting, almost pineapple-like aromatic. Sorry, I'm so hyperactive today. I just started drinking coffee again. I'm like, woohoo, coffee. Got some water cargo in there. Again, I mean, this really could be a legit cider apple. It's huge. It has some of that effervescent quality, at least that one did of uh, the apple previously known as Ice Princess. That's quite crisp. Also quite unripe and starchy. Give Grenadine Next Gold Rush 11.9 a stay of execution. It's just gonna feel really good to cut some of these things out of here. I gotta be careful not to overdo it. So far I think I'm doing, showing good restraint. Grenadine Next Gold Rush 11.11 not producing this year. Stay of execution. So this 11.9 is also producing a crap ton of apples and they're huge. I mean, look at these. This is in a year where the tree's bearing heavily. It's only, what, two inches in diameter at the base. Not very healthy, just monster crop here. Like this one just fell off. So let's try that one and see if it has that effervescent pineapple-y quality the first one had. But most of these aren't ripe yet, I don't think. Very tannic, fair amount of flavor kind of effervescent. If I was making a big batch of cider, this is the kind of apple I'd want to throw in the mix. I may at some point also just send out a bunch of experimental cider apples for cider people to try and, you know, get back to me. How much is this? This might be 1110 or 1120. Yeah, so this is Grenadine Next Gold Rush 1110. Do we have fruit on it? Yeah. Yeah, this is an interesting apple. There's very little on it. It's very similar to vanilla pink, which is right here. Either way, it's a keeper. Um, oh, here, it's just loaded down. Look at, look at this. Here we go. Look at this, you guys. Look at that. Don't think this is gonna be 
ready for us yet. It's not gonna get cold, if that's for sure. There's two or three very similar apples to vanilla pink, and that's one of them. And I may just end up going with just one of them, you know, not send out the other two ever, but we'll see. It's very vigorous though. This, like, this right here, look at that. Oh my God. Oh yeah, this thing is like crazy vigorous. Okay, so right here, I cut this off last winter right there. That's like a, a good solid half inch, maybe more, <laughs> in one year. And the one next to it's even grander. Grenadine Gold Rush 1110, very vigorous, very pink, neon pink flush. Interesting berry aromatics. You can see it has this red uh, wood color. Very nice, um, interesting apple. 1120, this is one of those handful of apples that's similar to uh, vanilla pink. And like vanilla pink in 1110, it is not ready yet. So stay of execution on that. Told you this was gonna take a while. And I'm not even doing everything I should be doing. Okay, we already tried this. This was Grenadine Gold Rush 11.5. Already overripe. Almost not bad. Doesn't quite cut it. I was interested to see though on the other tree that it had significant amount of pink flesh. It seems like a very healthy apple. Like the tree leaves always look really nice. Look, look at these big shiny beautiful leaves and again like i'm not going to call it but i'm it just never quite puts out let's see what this is because look at that i mean it's hard not to get excited about that it's huge it's got this pink flesh it's a beautiful apple look at this <laughs> look at that now these got more water than usual because I put this cactus in here and I would water it with a sprinkler and it, you know, a lot of the water was running off down here. So things right in this area tended to do a little better this year than they usually do, but it's okay. It's not exciting. Maybe a little watered down, but you know, I wanna bake this, stuff it with like raisins, brown sugar, butter, and maybe some walnuts or something. I mean, you can't call it. It's just, it's too neat. Let's get a name on this huge apple. You definitely need to write that down. Grenadine Gold Rush 11.4. Uh, I think we missed one here. It's Grenadine X Gold Rush 11.6. Hmm. That's actually somewhat promising. Fine grain, crisp flesh. Skin's a little thick. Tannins are like, they're on the high side. Still very edible. Pretty bright, pretty lively flavor. Not high acid, but a decent amount of acid to balance it out. Uh, pretty sweet. You know, it's not as exciting or compelling as uh, the apple previously known as Ice Princess. Let's see, let's try this one. It's a little greasier, it might be riper. It's also softer. Just like looking through these apples real quick, I don't see any scab. My guess is this inherited Gold Rush's scab resistance because I'm not seeing any scab at all. It's a very smooth looking apple. That one's very waxy. Yeah. Also softer, so that greasiness or waxiness is often a sign of um, overripeness. No, that one's good. I'm not saying I'm going to name it or anything. I kind of guess not, but I'm not going to cut it out either. Okay, this one is Grenadine X Gold Rush 1117. <coughs> it is not ready yet. Vanilla Pink is in there. I forget what its number is, but it doesn't matter because it has a name now. This is one of those apples in this row I'm talking about. All of them, Grenadine X Gold Rush that are real similar with this kind of, you know, this look, neon pink flesh, and again, vanilla pink's the one that already has a name and has already been released. And I have a feeling it's gonna be the best one. This has nice texture, but probably by the time it's actually ripe, because it's definitely not ripe, you know, it might lose that. Let's get a name on that one. I tried to tie this back this year a little bit just to get it off of um, my new super good red flushed apple, which I'll show you. Okay, now I can't read this one either. Grenadine X Gold Rush 11.9 or 11.4 or 11.8. Seriously, I need glasses, I can't tell. You know, it might even be 11.2 or 11.7, like a, I can't tell. That's this one, 11.7, 11.4, 11.8, 11.9, I don't know. Okay, and the next one is either 11.14 or 11.19. If I get some glasses, I, I think I'll be able to tell. Okay, this is a huge and gorgeous apple. Look at that. Look at that. Let's just polish this sucker up a little bit. Look at that. That's like beauty pageant material. 
This looks like a King David seedling or a Sweet 16 maybe, probably King David. And it tastes like it too. It has that like red apple flavor. Not in a good way now because this is, this one in particular is overripe. A little bit of pink staining in the flush. Grenadine Gold Rush? I don't think so. My best guess is actually Grenadine King David. Some kind of mix up. With all the cool stuff I grow and I'm always looking for something better. It's kind of just an apple. I mean, it's hard not to get suckered into this this look. While it may not have much in the way of pink flesh, it has some. And it could be useful in moving breeding forward. I don't know, maybe. By the time it's ripe, the flesh is getting a little bit foamy and questionable and then when it's overripe it's getting that kind of like you know kind of red delicious or sweet 16 red apple precipitous downhill decline in flesh texture i don't know what to say about this one um i can't cut it out it's just too gorgeous okay next is dutch master kind of characteristic beautiful russeting on the top this one is quite richly flavored uh pretty firm dense um not really super crisp or crunchy, maybe a little crisp, mostly dense. Pleasant though. Flat in shape, big hollow stem well like that. I had a ton of these this year and uh, they were real different. Like the tree in the spring orchard ripened way earlier. They were like a little bit watered down because they got a lot of water. The texture wasn't as good. They didn't keep as well. Not as much russeting. So pretty different in different environments. These turned out really good on this tree and there was a lot of them. It seems to be pretty productive. Yeah, that, this one's pretty crisp, nice flavor. Two days ago, I made a pie with this and it withstood the pie test and the slices stayed intact. It's got plenty of acidity. Like I remember mixing the, you know, the apples up with the sugar and everything ready to go. And I was just munching on them. I thought, wow, it tastes like I put lemon in there, you know, cause a lot of pie recipes will call for a little bit of extra lemon juice to just bring the acidity up. But these definitely don't need it and they hold their shape really nice. They had a nice uh, firm uh, bite to the, the apples, you know, not, not too much, just enough that they kind of held together and it's yeah, really good, great pie apple. Dutch Master's cool, it's a really neat apple. It's just a solid apple. It's a good performing, useful, practical, but also pretty if you're into antique looking things. Good size too in a good year. And this tree bore a ton of apples and it's still bar a bunch of apples like this and bigger even. This is awful. That's a cull. I already know that. I can't wait to cut that out. It's terrible. And this is the kind of case where I'm not gonna leave that stump. I'm just taking the whole thing out because I wanna give Dutch Master lots of room to grow. It's, you know, I can fix Dutch Master up and make it into a nice tree still. This one is nicknamed Granny Dean by my ex-girlfriend. When I was making the pollination, she's like, Granny Dean, you have to call it Granny Dean. It's uh, Grenadine and Granny Smith. So far, it's terrible. It's huge. Looks like Granny Smith, um, but as you can see, some of them are gonna blush out. It may end up with a little bit of red flesh. My guess is at very best, it's gonna be a cider apple. Clearly not ready yet. It looks like a cross between Granny Smith and Grenadine is what it looks like. It's got these like longitudinal rib looking nose things. <laughs> very unripe green apple tasting, very tannic, more than grenadine, already kind of soft. I think grenadine's just gonna be a loser. Probably won't cut it out quite this year, but maybe next year. We'll see, we'll see how it does. I think it's gonna be useless, honestly. Now we are into King David Rubiot crosses. Seems like it's not ready yet. There's only one apple on the tree. I probably have never tried this. It's uh, King David X Rubyot 13.6, and I just don't think it's ripe yet. And it has a, you can kind of feel them. They have, even if they're not squishy, they have a certain density feel to them when they're not ripe yet. Okay, this little scrappy thing hidden under these piles of huge fruiting, whatever that was. This is my new super awesome red fleshed apple. It had like a few blooms on it this year. I managed to pollinate a few of them and I bagged them because they were in a bag the aphids went out of control and they just ruined the apples that I pollinated. So I'm not getting any fruit off it this year. This is like the apple I'm most excited about. Only had fruit one year. And then this is what the aphids did. This one here is that King David Rubiot cross we were looking at earlier. I just don't think they're ready yet. Let's just pick that. 
too underripe to tell. As a dessert apple, I'm just gonna go on a limb and guess, not super promising. Rubyot King David, 13.2, looks somewhat similar, bigger, not as red. It's so hard to know when to pick these things. Kind of a similar texture to uh, Cherub I was talking about, kind of watery and dense, but not really in a good way. You should try something that's, yeah, I'm gonna try this big, nice one right here. Pretty, you can really see the King David in there. That's all water core. Not very promising. I would definitely throw it in a juice or cider mix, but glow acid, tannic texture's weird. This tree is like an inch in diameter down here. It's heavily shaded out. It's young. It just started bearing. It needs to be given a little more time to see uh, what it's going to do. So I'm not going to judge that one too quick. And that was Rubyot King David 13. Two. And next we have one more, Rubyot King David. This one is 13.4, probably not ripe yet. Hmm. This has that musky flavor. I've been picking that up and more apples. I don't know if it just started happening or if I just never noticed it or had like a name for it before. It's an intriguing phenomenon though. This is nearly ripe. Again, this tree's getting almost no sun. It's just buried. I would like to graft this one out, get some more exemplary fruit as soon as possible. The cow's just determined to stay on my lap. Okay, we're gonna have to get to the next tree from somewhere else, but it's going to be... Okay, well, I can't read the tag. Okay, I'm just gonna scratch you so much in like one minute that you're gonna hate me and wanna get away. Oh yeah, over scratch, over scratch, over scratch. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's too much, you can't take it. You have to get away. She's like, I can take it. I can take it. Oh God. Is that enough? <laughs> one apple on that one with I can't, where I can't read the tag. It's actually somewhat intriguing. A little bit like King David, but more fruity. Yeah, this one's promising. I think I'll graph this out too. I'm gonna take a closer look at that tag. Note to self, bring reading glasses. You're old now, get over it, deal with it. Look at these. This is that 11, um, 10. Look at that. Ropes of like gorgeous pink apples. Oh yeah, I see it there. It's 13.6. Rubyot King David 13.6 gets grafted out somewhere. Keep moving here. Well, if we get through this row, we'll be probably through half of the work. Supposedly, King David X Rubyot 13.1. And it looks interesting. It's uh, got these kind of funny, oddly shaped, long... Look, and they're all that way. That's definitely like the type. Kind of conical. Doesn't look ripe. It's very peculiar. It tastes more like a Wixen cross. Maybe a little bit savory, extremely sweet, low acid, cloying. A little bit like sugar cane, but not really in a good way. Not really ripe yet though. No scent, very little of kind of any, any sort of aromatics going on. Doesn't seem too promising, but you know, I'm not gonna cut it out or anything. I love apples. Let me just pick this one here. Oh yeah, give me that. Grenadine X Golden Russet 11, one. Looks like we might be too late on this one. Is there anything else on this tree? Yeah, here we go. Grainy, ploying, sweet, low acid, kind of mealy, overripe, overripe. I'm calling that thing. Get out, get out of my life. Get out of my orchard. Get out. Grenadine X Golden Russet 11.6. Grainy slash mealy. Okay flavor, not a lot. Kind of an edgy, weird, medium tannin. I don't know, you guys. It's not quite a call, but it's it's close. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna call this. I just don't feel comfortable when it's producing one apple. If there was a tree full of these and I was pressing juice or making apple butter or whatever or cider, yeah, sure, why not? Would I replicate it? Name it, recommend that anyone else try it. I seriously doubt it. Let's try this one. A little overripe too, like we just kind of missed it. Yeah, we're right. Missed the boat on that one. Great Indian X Golden Russet 11.6. Day of execution, not too promising. Better taste it earlier next year, late September to early October. This is Great Indian X Golden Russet 11.11. 11. Looks like 1111. 11. Unless it's like 1110 or 1116, I just can't see. So yeah, this one grafted 
onto the next tree. Like there's a natural graft right here. Those two trees just rub together enough that they grafted together. So it's grafted to this next apple, which I call Big Red. And a lot of these apples on the ground are Big Red. But this 1111 or whatever it is, not bad. Like I almost want to keep eating it but just kind of, and it's not quite ripe yet. So interested to see what that one does. Okay, so Big Red looks nearly the same. Very similar, just it's bigger. They're not real big this year because I, I grew so many that the branch, the actual trunk broke right here. I didn't thin it enough. It's almost there, can be a really pretty apple. It can grow to a good size. Again, I left too many this year, so it's pretty small. You know, I have grafted this out and grown it in another spot and tasted it and it's just the same it just uh it's almost there but not quite you know it's tempting to do something with it because it is a nice large pretty pink fleshed apple without really much in the way of flaws but it doesn't rise to any level where i'm like okay yeah yay big red it's always like big red uh, eh, me big red the fifth tree we're visiting or graft of uh, the apple formerly known as Ice Princess. Looks a little less ripe, a little less good. Not unsurprisingly in these crowded trial rows with this like screwed up, cracked, sunburned tree overbearing on this little tiny bent, sad piece of stuff here. I'm not even gonna taste that. We already got a pretty good beat on that apple. <clears throat> and next is Greenardine X Golden Russet. 11, it looks like seven. I'm pretty sure this has never distinguished itself in any way. And that could be a bittersweet. It tastes very sweet and very tannic. I'm gonna go grab my basket, which I just abandoned and uh, get a sugar reading on this. We're only gonna make it through two rows today, but they're the hardest two rows. So the next video, we should easily be able to get through all three of those rows and any other random seedlings and be done with the seedlings. Yeah, I think, I think this has promise. It looks like Dutch Master, like it's flat. It's got a pretty big stem well. It's got the russeting on the top, all of which are hallmarks of Allen's Everlasting. Also the rich flavor. It has kind of a fairly, yeah. I mean, it's not as fruity or complex as Allen's, but you know, also given that it's got this red and the streaking, it just doesn't look like a golden russet seedling to me. Probably like cross-contamination. If I had to guess, I'd say it's Grenadine X uh, Allen's Everlasting. Someday we could get them genetically tested. I mean, you could do that now. I just don't, I'm not gonna spend the money. It's not that important or interesting. Someday maybe. I'm gonna try a couple more of these and we're gonna get a sugar test. And there's tons of these things on the ground. So, you know, look at, yeah, look at all these. Lots of those small ones are from this tree, so it was very productive this year. You know, if you handed me a pile of these and said, what are those? I would say, oh, that's either Allen's Everlasting or Dutch Master. Very dense, quite bitter, meaning like tannic. Yeah, I think this would make great cider. I'm guessing it's gonna be fairly high, but not like crazy high, you know, maybe even under 20. So with this thing, you wanna calibrate. First, we put on a drop of distilled water and that's to calibrate it for temperature. Hold that up to some bright light here and make sure it reads zero, close enough. I'm not looking for anything more than like 0.5 accuracy, so. And someone asked me about this tool and which one I got. I've been very happy with this one, but I will look it up and add it as a affiliate link. Not that I'm an expert on these or anything, I just got one that seemed pretty good. I don't like the idea of having a temperature compensated one because it's just like another thing to go wrong that I have no control over, right? Like I know with this one that I'm probably getting an accurate uh, calibration when I do it by hand. It's not a big deal. Yeah, we're at 20. So 20 bricks is, you know, very respectable, a lot of, a lot of sugar. The highest I've ever measured in this orchard is um, 28 in uh, Sugarwood. 20 is very, pretty high. So this is the kind of apple I would send out in a bundle of like experimental cider apples to some cider people to try out. My hesitancy is like, I don't like sending things out without a name. And if it turns out to be something amazing, I might give it a dumb name before I send it out, you know, not knowing what's up. I'm really tempted to come out here though and pick a bunch of these up, pick the rest off the tree and try to make some like a micro batch of cider or get someone else to do it. I am talking with someone about doing that uh, local cidery. In summary, Gunnardine X Golden Russet 11.7, possibly a promising flat little cute cider apple, bittersweet. Not low acid, but not, not sharp either. Hard candy cider. Looks way green. No, whoa, oh. <coughs> Man, that dried me out. 
This one looks ripe. Let's try this. Or close. I haven't really got the aromatics yet. We know that's Keeper. It already has a name. Grenadine X Lady Williams 1111. No fruit. These Grenadine X Lady Williams are just not going to be ready. You know, Lady Williams is super late and most of its offspring are super late. That's not ready. This is what I always do when I get to this part. I'm basically like, da da da, uh, you know, none of these are ready, which is cool because that means we're almost done for the day. I'm just appled out here. <clears throat> but um, one of these is a promising a winter cooking apple, early winter, or late fall. The rest of these are, you know, potentially promising for cider again, like as experimental cider apples. Visit those again later this year. I am appled out. I'm gonna go pick all of my saffron to process tonight. I just wanna get a sugar reading on this. I wish I'd taken more sugar readings today. I just, I can't remember everything while I'm talking and shooting videos and crawling around in here trying to sort out what's what. But let's just sugar test this cherub. If it's super high or if it just tastes really sweet because the acid's not very high. 21, so not crazy high. That could still get higher though. Well, I didn't mark a lot for culling, but I marked a few and it's gonna feel good to cut those few out and start to uh, be able to sort some of this stuff out. To get in here and do some pruning and propping up. I have a lot more energy lately, so I'm hoping that will continue. I'm doing my best to sort out my health problems and get functional. So I can do this and everything else better. See you in the next round.